Hey, what's up everybody? So this is Ian and Lily, and in today's video, uh, I'm gonna be talking to you about what it takes to get started as a web developer. So um, most of my viewers are people who are just getting into web development um, or have been in web development for like a year or so, but not for very long. Uh, and I think that most of my viewers are people that are looking for jobs or currently have a job and are looking to move up, um, get a promotion, things like that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so <clears throat> in my experience, um, well, first let me say this, the, the difficulty that a lot of beginners have when starting out is the overwhelming amount of options out there. There's a lot of technologies. Lily's gonna get down, hold on. See ya. There's a lot of technologies that you can learn and it can be extremely overwhelming. Um, so very often I get people asking me, what should I learn or what should I learn next? You know, should I learn React or, or Angular or Vue or those are all front end JavaScript frameworks. But basically they hear all these buzzwords of what they're told is hot in the industry and what will get them a job and they're wondering like okay well which direction do I go and half the time students don't even know what these things are when they're asking about them um, so my advice in that regard would be not to get caught up in all of the different technologies that are available for you to learn uh, but stick with the basics uh, stick with the three or four necessary things that you'll need to be a good web developer and then once you've gotten really good at those things it'll be really easy for you to branch out and learn things like all these special tools that you can use um, and if you hone in on your skills with the three uh, main technologies that we'll talk about in a second um, then you're more likely to get a job and then when you get a job if they have a bunch of special tools they use like NPM and Webpack and Yarn and uh, you know all these front-end frameworks things like that then you can learn those on a job fairly quickly especially if you have that good uh, base of knowledge set up in these other technologies so those technologies are HTML CSS and JavaScript and HTML and CSS in particular are really easy to learn they're really easy to learn the basics anyway and then what ends up happening is people get the basics down and they're like oh this is kind of boring I want to move on to the you know what makes me a real programmer and that's a programming language like JavaScript uh, or Ruby and Python, Perl, etc. Um, which is great, but then they find themselves circling back later and they're like, oh, I don't understand how to style this element correctly, or I don't understand how to use the correct semantic element for this scenario that I'm uh, for this website that I'm trying to build or this feature that I'm trying to build on a website, etc. So take the time to understand HTML, not just the basics, but also um, just the entire language through and through. It won't take you very long. There's people on YouTube like Derek Bannis uh, that have like HTML5 in one hour, and he covers pretty much everything you'll ever need to know for HTML. Um, so take an hour and go through that stuff, and if there's things that you don't understand what he's talking about, then just write them down uh, like you would if you were in school, and then investigate that stuff, look it up further, find out the answers to the questions that you have as you're watching that video. Um, same thing for CSS. CSS is uh, a little bit trickier than HTML, in my opinion, and uh, mastering it can be pretty difficult, especially in today's landscape. Uh, it's advancing pretty quickly, uh, and that there's a bunch of new tools that are coming out that make it easier to write CSS, which is great. Um, but that does kind of go back to the original problem where now you have all these extra options. So you're wondering, do I learn Foundation? Do I learn Bootstrap? Do I learn CSS Grid or Flexbox? Um, <clears throat> I would just work on getting CSS down, just vanilla CSS to the regular CSS language. And then whenever you have that information locked down, then you can move on and find, you can start experimenting with frameworks and things like that and find out what works for you, what you prefer to use. And then even then, I mean, you may prefer to use Bootstrap 
and then later on in the industry you discover that the company you're working for uses foundation or the client that you have prefers that you use CSS grid uh, so on and so forth so don't don't get biased don't get married to anything just you know learn what you can but definitely learn the basics so that when it comes time to learn something new uh, like a framework it's very easily easy for you to ramp up and learn that technology so that's HTML and CSS those are gonna be the building blocks for any good web developer and then when we start talking about programming languages we have JavaScript uh, hold on I gotta get these toys from Lily real quick hey, give me that give me that no no you can't have that Nope. Where'd the lid go? Okay, so uh, JavaScript is going to be the main programming language that you want to learn. I would say first and foremost, uh, if you're having difficulty with JavaScript, because that's your first actual programming language and the syntax is tricky for you and you're having difficulty learning it, then you might uh, use something a little more abstract or a little more human readable uh, like Ruby or Python. Um, but they're all fairly similar. JavaScript and PHP and languages like that, uh, they have you know more curly brackets and semicolons and things that are going to make it a little more difficult to learn if it's your first language but not necessarily um, but the reason you probably want to learn JavaScript first or at least second if you use a simpler language like Ruby first is because JavaScript is the only language that you can use on the front end um, and so when we talk about front end we're talking about the browser uh, that's the code that gets run on people's browsers as opposed to on the server that is serving the website. Um, so every single so as far as programming languages are concerned you JavaScript is an absolute must for the front end uh, because you don't have any other options and then when it comes to server-side programming scripting languages then you can decide okay do I want to use Node.js which is JavaScript for the server or do I want to use uh, Ruby or you know uh, Python is pretty popular right now. Uh, PHP has been around for quite some time and it's relatively popular. Um, so those are languages that you can learn as your second or third language. But I would personally recommend learning JavaScript at, as their first language. And if you're having difficulty with it then use a simpler language like Ruby as your first language, just as an introduction to programming so you can understand things like variables and uh, how to create data with arrays and objects, things like that, or how to store data. Um, but yeah, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are gonna be your little trifecta that you wanna perfect at, or get down as, as good as possible because that's gonna be your base knowledge that's going to help you moving forward with all these new technologies that are coming out uh, and those things are changing like JavaScript is, in the last couple of years has changed quite a bit um, but it's they're not crazy changes that you can't keep up with it's stuff that makes writing the code easier so I would definitely recommend you know trying to stay on top of the new changes but don't get too overwhelmed um, because it's not happening at light speed. I mean, new changes are coming out, but they're not becoming the standard overnight. So you have time to catch up with that stuff after you've perfected the the base knowledge that you need for that language. Um, so in your journey to becoming a web developer and finding your first job or finding contract clients if you're trying to do freelancing work, that's going to be your bread and butters, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I wouldn't worry about any of the extra stuff that people are trying to get you to learn. Um, the, the 
hot topics and buzzwords out there that leave you overwhelmed, wondering, you know, well, what do I learn? You start something, and it's very easy, especially when you're doing online learning and you're learning on your own, to pick up a technology and then as soon as it becomes hard, put it down and try to find something easier. Uh, so that if that happens with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I, I would say, you know, definitely look for more resources. Uh, maybe you get a better resource that you jive with a little bit better and helps you understand the language um, a little bit easier. But definitely don't give up on it altogether because you don't have anything that you can replace those languages with. So once you know those languages, then you can move on to learning other languages. And this is for web development, obviously. If you're just getting into programming in general, then I would recommend a bunch of other stuff. But for programming, web, web development programming, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are going to be your bread and butter. So that's my recommendation uh, for people starting out. And I'm going to have a couple more videos coming up that are going to have some more suggestions about next steps and things you can do while you're learning to uh, better facilitate your learning and make your life a little bit easier. So stay tuned. Thanks.